Dear folks, welcome back to Just Scary. Today we're not in for a spook, but we are going to check out the reactions of guilty teenagers who were convicted for lifelong sentences very early into their lives. Click that subscribe button and keep watching to know more. The first trial would be that of Sean Dell Jackson. Here you can see that he appears in Milwaukee County Courthouse for a sentencing after being found guilty of killing a college student. Jackson, who was then 18 years old, and a friend were allegedly looking for victims when they observed Potter leave a pub. The victim, named Nathan Potter and aged 21, was a student at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. He was stalked, confronted, and demanded money by Jackson. When Jackson discovered that Potter had no money, he simply shot Potter and killed him. In this footage, you can see Jackson making gestures towards the victim's family, and when he was escorted out of the courtroom, you can see him grinning at the family. Now, moments before the sentencing, Jackson's mother testified to the court that she first learned about the killing on the television when she saw it on the news. She then broke out into tears. Jackson's uncle reportedly tipped off the police on his whereabouts, where he was arrested. Jackson showed neither regret nor sadness for the victim's passing or his crime during the trial, and even grimmed at the victim's family once he was being judged and brought throughout the courtroom. I know that that is something that is reserved for the most serious of cases, and I... During the trial, John Potter, Potter's father, spoke to the judge Rebecca Darlett and said, Judge, there is nothing that can be said to bring back our Nathan but he also requested a sentence that matched the heinous act. Is there such a thing as pure evil? He questioned. We believe it. Jackson became hostile and began yelling at the judge after being given a life sentence with no possibility of release. As the TV reporter observed, as if they anticipated it, which they did because of the convicted killer's actions, during his trial, the police in the courtroom acted swiftly. Officers had to pepper spray him in order to control him. While Potter's reaction was strong, Jackson's family in the rear of the courtroom began insulting her after the sentence was handed down, yelling, I hate you all, I hate you all, and God's the judge. His friend was given a 12-year prison term after admitting to being the lookout. The next trial is that of Jennifer Mee. But also, before we get to that, if you're enjoying this video so far, then please do click that subscribe and like button now. Defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree as charged. Jennifer Mee is shown here in the Pinellas County Justice Center at the age of 19. She was charged with first degree murder. But this wasn't the first time that Mee had caught the public's eye. Mee was already popular as the Hiccups Girl. Um, some days I am because it's just like I know that it's a name that will never die down. When she was 15 years old, she first came to the attention of the public when she developed a case of uncontrollable hiccups. She was initially known as the Hiccup Girl, but all that ended when her hiccups were cured. When she was arrested on charges of planning a robbery with victims that she had met online, the media lost interest in her. According to the reports, she had enlisted the aid of another acquaintance, Lauren Rafer, and her then-boyfriend, Lamont Noon, in order to assist robbing victims. Parents testified has a history of being someone who uh, can be manipulated. Me met up with a 22-year-old guy that she found online. She lured the victim into an empty house where she and her two pals robbed and shot him to death. They received $50 from the robbery and the murder. Her lawyer, John Trevina, claimed that even though this client was taking medication to reduce the hiccuping, she still experienced episodes from time to time. After he saw the two of them together, he shot the victim. During a brief break in her murder trial, she hiccuped. She's going to plan to uh, uh, come in with hiccups. And I think any medical expert will tell you that's not something that can be fake. In 2010, Me tricked Shannon Griffin, a 22-year-old Walmart employee, into going to a rundown house where she was supposed to buy marijuana. Once there, Griffin was held up by two of Me's buddies at gunpoint for robbery, but he resisted and was shot four times. He just thought he was going on a date. Just a young college kid grinning ear to ear, about to go on a date. Laron Rayford, Mee's co-defendant, was found guilty and given a life term in jail in August. 
Trevina asserted that there was insufficient evidence to indict his client and that she did not plan the heist. Prosecutors, however, claimed that Mi had set up everything, and they used police interviews and a call between Mi and her mother that had been recorded while they were both in custody as proof. And the jury having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, you have 30 days to appeal. She informed her mother that she was charged with murder even though she did not fire the shot that killed Griffin during the phone call. The next trial is that of Dylan Schumacher. I didn't mean to kill Austin. Actually, I really didn't. You know, I, I, really think I, did. I didn't mean to hurt him. On March 19th, 2013, Dylan Schumacher, then age 16, was watching for his girlfriend, Ashley Smith's two small sons, as he worked her shift at a restaurant in Springville, New York. One of the sons was dead by the morning, and Schumacher had been taken into custody on suspicion of murder. It was then found out that he had killed his older son, Austin, who was barely two years old, by beating him to death. After being found guilty of second-degree murder, Schumacher sobbed during the verdict, claiming that he loved Austin and hadn't intended to kill him. For his attempt to convince the jury through tears, State Supreme Court Justice M. William Boller referred to him as a manipulator and deceiver, and sentenced him to 25 years to life in prison. Dylan Schumacher's prison term was lowered by the Court of Appeals in February 2016 to 18 years to life in prison, putting him eligible for release in 2031 after serving his full 18 years. But even after being freed, the state will continue to have control over him. Since his arrest in 2014, 26-year-old Schumacher has completed nine years of an indeterminate sentence. The Clinton Correctional Facility in New York is where he's presently finishing up his term. It's estimated that in 2031, he'll be eligible for parole. Keep an eye out that Schumacher enters the courtroom before he can be set up behind the defense table. He begins sobbing and apologizing to everyone. In a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury and they're going to feel sorry for me. I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. I can't take back what was done. I wish I could give my life for Austin. I can't take back what was done. I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. Our next and final story for today is the story of Brandon Spencer. Not a bad person, but I made a mistake. But I'm not just some gangbanger that she tried to betray me at who is facing four counts of attempted murder in the Los Angeles County Superior Court. On one Halloween night, 19-year-old Spencer was at a crowded party on the campus of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles when gunshots rang out, scattering everyone. Spencer reportedly ran as well, but he was stopped in a parking lot a half a mile away, where he was picked up by the LAPD for questioning. A few days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. Spencer, who was 19 at the time of the incident, had a large number of defenders testify in court in favor of him, including an LAPD officer. However, investigators discovered evidence of gang life in the form of taunts, threats, and images of gunplay in photos and posts on his phone. He was found guilty by the jury in under three hours. This is the moment in which he got convicted. He's at the verge of breaking down while the judge delivers the conviction. Nearly 50 family members and friends crowded the courtroom as the judge pronounced the sentence, despite Spencer's insistence throughout the trial that he was innocent. Spencer was restrained by sheriff deputies after he hit his head on the defense table, and then Brandon received a 40-year-to-life sentence for four counts of attempted murder. To the other, to each other, and to the life sentence. Years later, many petitions sprung up challenging the 40-year-old sentence of Brandon Spencer because it preached by many that he is actually innocent and that he was convicted against less and false evidence. And with that, we have come to the end of today's video, dear folks. If you like this video, then comment down below what you think about these teenage convicts and what you feel about their convictions. Do refer to the best videos to get spooked on our playlist, but don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and feel free to check out some other videos on our channel as well. Until then, stay tuned, take care, and goodbye.